Welcome everybody to a new episode of Flower Circus Talks. Today a special episode. I'm going to talk with uh, Christina Diduk, a floral entrepreneur from uh, Lviv, Ukraine. We're going to talk about uh, yeah, the business that she uh, she has and also the projects uh, that she's uh, running at the moment and uh, yeah, what's happening in uh, Ukraine at the moment. So uh, very special interview. Uh, hope you like it and uh, please support her as well uh, with her project that she has uh, at the moment. So enjoy the interview. Christina, welcome. Hi. Really nice to see you. Uh, nice to see you too. Yeah. Uh, your hat. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, if you would like to go incognito, you have just to take off the hat and nobody recognizes. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody thinks I have hair because of the head, but there's no hair under the head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, looking very nice. Uh, what are you doing these days? Uh, I'm actually in Holland with my parents, uh, like you. I was living in Ukraine, so uh, I had to uh, to leave. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, luckily, I can stay with my parents with my son now. So, uh, but I'm also curious, where are you now? And 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 yeah, uh, I'm right now in Vienna. Uh, like the war I met in Poland because like the day before war on 23rd of February I went to Poland to choose the tulips uh, which had to go to Women's Day uh, yeah. in Ukraine so I have chosen all paid for all good did a really good job <laughs> and then 24th February came and in the morning it became a disaster yep. uh, <laughs> everybody knows uh, but at first I thought that okay maybe some misunderstanding something unknown unusual and maybe it will last for one day so I postponed the delivery of flowers just for one day at first yeah but okay. all we know how it started to escalate and so um, majority of this time I spent in Tallinn and Estonia okay. and right now I'm in Vienna yeah. uh, because we do flowers for ukraine project here also and we participate in a lot of other projects uh, maybe i sent you some photos maybe yeah. maybe you can also show them. yeah I, I will show you the pictures and i really want to talk about uh, flowers for ukraine as well the project yeah. you're doing which you're doing a fantastic job but uh, <laughs> yeah before all of this started you were already very very business a busy <laughs> in any <in> flower business <laughs> <laughs> Actually, the business remains. Yeah. Uh, like uh, I haven't had uh, any day off since starting of the war, and uh, uh, like actually, I looked that all the people are now doing, of course, in different place, in different conditions, but which uh, how they did before they yeah. do the same now. Those who were doing really a lot now do really a lot. Those who were complaining complain. <laughs> Those who, <laughs> and people, uh, it's one more uh, notion that people do not change, change circumstances around them. But uh, <laughs> my mother is joking that I will find job 24 seven whenever I go. <laughs> 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 and it's actually looking like this way. Yeah. So you, can you tell a bit about all the projects you have? I mean, you have uh, 358 flower base, you're doing yes, wedding, uh, uh, you're doing the del flower delivery, you're doing so many things. <laughs> actually, now from this project, only flower delivery remained. Yeah. Uh, because uh, obviously the wholesaler project is in the worst condition. Because one more car... Uh, a lot of flowers went from Holland on Tuesday and on Thursday, on the first day of war, they were already in Ukraine and they all died. Yeah. Because we had clients in Kyiv, in Mariupol, in Kherson, in all the parts of Ukraine. And the first weeks of war were a shock to everyone. And obviously nobody thought about any flowers. Actually, now they are uh, starting to uh, 
remind about those flowers and tell, oh, yes, I ordered flowers. I gave you some money in advance. Could you give me those back? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's the first part. The second part of flowers, uh, we buy for eight years a lot of flowers from a Polish grower, yeah. a lot of tulips. And uh, we also did this, this year. <laughs> and on 23rd, I have chosen all. I have looked at the quality. I have chosen all varieties. So I did pretty good job. <laughs> and all the tulips remained on the European side because uh, I understood on 24th, 25th that there is no need to send yeah. them to Ukraine at all. And so I tried to sell as much flowers as possible. And that was occupying me the first days of war. And <laughs> the conditions were not so good because uh, after this all started, uh, the prices on the market fallen very rapidly. Yeah. So basically I couldn't sell wholesaler. I could sell only to end customer. And as you know, it's much more slower and it's quite, quite another thing. Yeah. Uh, but I'm acquainted with this market also. So it became possible, um, but, uh, but very hard. Yeah. And uh, from this, um, from this, like it was all growing all the time because first, at first i was selling flowers just to sell them and to give back some some money to holland and to pay some workers and so on but then uh i was uh, some part of flowers left and i thought mm, why not to give them to volunteers to refugee center and then i went to this refugee center and uh, in tallinn in estonia yeah. And I've seen so many volunteers working 24-7 and sometimes they work with people in shock. Sometimes they work with people who do not say, uh, are not polite to them, are not kind to them, not because they are bad, but because they survived such things that they are constantly screaming or constant, like, uh, it's very stressful for them yeah. because volunteers are usually one of the best people, uh, are usually people who really are willing to help. And I thought that they need some thank you from Ukrainians also. And we presented those flowers to the volunteers and uh, literally they cried when they received. They said that, oh my God, we were waiting for this so long. And uh, then, in two nights, uh, we have made a, a website. It, it's very simple, really yeah. very simple. But uh, it has the main idea that, yes, <laughs> this one, uh, that you can uh, donate to the flowers. And these flowers will be presented to volunteers, to medical workers, to heroes. To, to the people who are working so much for yeah. this war to end as quickly as possible. Or you can take the flowers, you can take them now in Tallinn and from the next week on 22nd, 23rd April, you will be able to take them in Vienna. Now, we are actually moving with this project and we are trying to raise awareness of people as much as possible because uh, what we now see is that first days of war, everyone was in shock. Yeah. And everyone helped as much as possible. But in a month, a lot of people tired and war is not getting any better. It's getting worse and worse. You have seen what happened in Bucha, you have seen what happened in Irpin. After that, uh, the chemical weapon in Mariupol was used, uh, Zarin, uh, yeah. neuroparalytical gas. And uh, the more and more issues are rising and they are looking awful. Uh, yesterday we participated in a demonstration. We uh, decorated it with flowers uh, against rap rapings of uh, Ukrainian women by Russian soldiers. And it's also awful when you see those women, even, even these are not 
the ones who, who were raped. But I have I have my acquainted people in Lviv. They say that a lot of women were transported to to the western part of Ukraine and are transported to Poland later. They yeah. are without teeth. They are they are suicidal. They are they cannot live their life anymore. There is a woman who tried to commit suicide several times after her six-year-old daughter was raped. And such stories are, uh, it's, you actually cannot sleep yeah. at all because such stories are awful. Such stories are like complete disaster. That's... And uh, we have to remind people that we are here, that war has not ended, that normal life has not returned to our homes, that half of our home, half of Ukraine is in ruins now. And that's what we do also. And, and this is like uh, uh, our life go, goes now. Uh, at least it has a mission. At least it, it has some important things to be done and that's what most important and now you are asking how is business actually i mm, i haven't thought about it so much these times because uh like half of my team is working is working in our office is yeah. working as volunteers and between it delivering flowers but uh, the main things they do they are collecting they are distributing they are repacking humanitarian aid and sending it to the different parts of ukraine yeah. and i try to gather as much as possible here and send it to ukraine also. yeah that's so, unbelievable how you can use all your contacts and then transports and then the things you already have to to uh, so people can benefit from it uh, while they yeah, really need it in, in in europe everybody has seen the the pictures from butcher but it's it's a small town of fifty thousand people. Uh, Mariupol is uh, fifteen times bigger. Uh, and no, and nobody tells what's happening there. Uh, no. They there is new rule there that they cannot bury the killed people. No. Uh, they have mobile crematories and they burn people. It's yeah. uh, I I couldn't imagine that in. 21st century in 2022 i could be speaking such things because it looks like second world war yeah it's even worse yeah that that's what you see a lot or a lot some of the the older people in ukraine telling that uh comparison with the second world war this is even yes. much worse yes yes it is and... uh, because such awful things Maybe I do not know, <laughs> but uh, in such uh, such amounts, we didn't hear such from the Second World War. No, and it's it's really close by now, and and we all thought we we learned something uh, from it, or hoped we learned something from it, but it's happening again, and in such a big scale. I mean, it is something beyond belief, and that's why still a lot of people are afraid to watch the news, are afraid to get the news in, because even though they don't, uh, I have some people here, they don't have, or they know me and they know that I live in, in Ukraine, but otherwise they didn't have any connection with Ukraine. But even for them, it's really difficult to see what's happening. Yes, uh, it's for everyone, for every human being, it's difficult. Uh, because we are not used to such pictures. We uh, yesterday when I saw this girl um, who who is an artist who was moving, who was uh, like making a performance. It was impossible to watch, though I knew that she is she is an actor. She is not yeah. really a raped person, but but yeah. that's awful. Yeah. So, so you're really helping out. I mean, you're traveling from from Tallinn to uh, Vienna, yeah, and and helping out with demonstration and then yeah, and uh, uh, and also helping out people. Uh, our image of our country is also very important. Uh, we uh, when we meet the volunteers, when we meet the people, we we tell them, we explain to them, we. Uh, 
just every Ukrainian now is an ambassador of his country. And yep. we have to remember that. Uh, because people will more believe someone real behind, like in front of them, yeah. than, uh, than television or something like that. Uh, because even in Tallinn, I met uh, a, lot of, a lot of people, Russian speaking people, who will say something like, oh, nobody knows actually what's happening and so on. And, uh, uh, well, I start to tell that, okay, look. Yeah. And then I need to, the, the story needs to be told. Uh, we're already over 50 days now in, in the war. And then mm -hmm. what happens with every news, it, in the beginning it's in the news and, and then it slowly uh, goes down. And I think it's very important like what you keep it up to keep it on the top of news, uh, not uh, not something that was before. The war has to be the first news every day till it ends. Yeah, uh, we cannot. Uh, in Vienna, I've met a lot of uh, like taxi drivers from Syria, and there is war there for nine years, and they. Hope every day that it will end and they will return to Syria. But it goes for nine years and nobody talks about it anymore. Yeah. Uh, we cannot allow this to be one more war. Yeah. And, and, it cannot be so because uh, right now for us it's the war of light against the darkness. It's the war that has to be won with real real values real things not uh, if uh, if people still buy gas and buy oil from russia they support uh, it means that economy is more important for them than lives of the people whatever they say yeah and and we have to scream we have to uh, to tell as many people as possible to, for them to understand, for them to put it in that uh, now genocide is happening. Yeah, and and then the stories we see, like I already said, uh, Bucha is just a small town, but all the other towns uh, around Kiev, there are so many towns like Bucha, but bigger cities than Bucha, where the same is happening, or even worse. Yes, and and now they will uh, they will hide the results of their doings. Uh, and uh, we will not see. Well, it's, and, and luckily, there are people like you who uh, keep the attention uh, alive. And, and like all you, uh, it's, it's very important what you are doing because uh, like the, the more in Europe I get, like Estonians, Latvians and Lithuanian peoples are supporting us really, really much. Because uh, they are also close to Russia. They also know who will be the next country. And uh, here it's like war is not here so much. I can compare because I fly back and forth. I, yeah. I compare the environment there and here. And it's completely different. Here people are joking. They are living their normal life. They are no. Yeah. So I, I noticed the same when I uh, fled from from Kiev to uh, to Poland, and you saw the panic in Poland as well. And yes. once in Germany, it was like uh, everyday life. Yes, and it's very like uh, it's very hard in some sometimes because uh, you are living like you are you are on the war. Yeah. Whenever you are, whatever you do, you are you are actually on the war and yeah. people just think that it's far but it's not far no not at all people are always surprised that from amsterdam to the ukrainian border is less than 1500 kilometers yes so it's it's really close by it's it's europe yes but uh, and ukraine ukrainian people are now showing so much bravery they are uh, <laughs> we are we are doing uh, like very uh, sometimes impossible things 
yeah. the most of course are the people who are now in ukraine and the people who are working uh, despite all air raid alarms despite everything that's happening people are working every day yeah and trying to do something it's, it's unbelievable how people try to pick up their lives again and, and open their shops again, uh, try to, to grow flowers again, to grow vegetables and everything. Uh, the farmers who are seeding for all of Europe or half the world, we, we must say, with the danger for their own lives, uh, but they are doing it. And, and yeah, Ukraine. Because it's a part of life, you know, when I'm working with flowers, it's uh, some, like, our O2 that, that my life has returned to me. Yeah. And for them, it's also the same, that they are doing what they used to do, and it's understandable completely. But really, they are heroes doing this. Yeah, it's unbelievable. And then, yeah, protecting uh, all of Europe, I think, at the moment. Yes. Uh, uh, actually, Ukrainians are dying every day protecting liberal democracy in Europe. Yeah. Which, which I think a lot of people in Europe take for granted. But yeah, open up that. It seems to me that they do not believe. Yeah. Or they believe that the situation is not so awful as it's written. It's much more awful than it's written. Yeah. Much, much more. Yeah, for every destroyed building, there are many, many dead people. And then we only see the, the destroyed buildings. We cannot know how many people are dead because... We do not have the records in the occupied cities. Yeah. Uh, we cannot know how many people exactly were deported from Ukraine against their will. Uh, from 500,000 to 700,000 people were deported from Ukraine against their will. Now they are put in something like concentration camps and the children are forced to learn Russian and the uh, parents are going to Siberia or Sakhalin work and die program. Yeah. And it's it's 21st century. Yeah. It's not, uh, it's like Middle Ages didn't have so. Middle Ages didn't have bombs, which can now fall on our heads. And uh, people are still considering whether to uh, close the sky above us or not to close the sky every day people are dying yeah. the one who is decided every day has more and more blood on his hands that's totally true i mean once again i will show the the website flowersforukraine.com yes. just Thank check you out the website i mean this is a great initiative and and bear in mind everything you do for ukraine uh the smallest amount or the smallest effort, everything helps. Don't everything counts actually. Every uh, every coin counts now. Yeah. Uh, do not think that you are making too little. Do not think that you are donating too little. Everything counts, yeah. and everything is important for us now. Yeah, it's unbelievable to see you as such a strong Ukrainian woman, and I think <laughs> it's the, the the most strong woman in the world. <laughs> about it before, but um, it's it's unbelievable what you do, and and thank you for doing this. Thank uh, you very much. Thank you for speaking up uh, because, uh, like, uh, I used to talk to people. I, uh, but I am surprised how some companies react. They react as just business. Nothing happens. We, we understand, but it's our money and so on. Yeah. So I'm really happy that you, you speak up, that you, uh, you tell this and that you organize this meeting for people, for more people to see. And, and my t-shirt worked. Yeah. Russians, uh, <laughs> Russian worship has sunk su successfully, so, <laughs> so t shirt work to really yeah. <laughs> That's one thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, every effort counts. Yeah. Uh, just, just do, just speak, just help, just donate, just whatever you can, whatever is okay for you, but do it. Uh, like then, 
our victory will be closer. And each day of getting closer and closer to it, each day counts. Yeah, that's for sure. Thank you so much for your time and, and all the effort uh, you do. Uh, <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I, I'm sure that we, uh, when this all ends, we will organize something new and beautiful in Ukraine. I want to organize a conference and uh, I, I already invited you to it. <laughs> okay, that's great. <laughs> I can't wait and uh, I will bring yes. the things. <laughs> You're the first person I invite to this conference. <laughs> so uh, actually, I am uh, very project oriented. That's why I have to do this project. Russians fuck off my country. I have to do this project. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you for doing it. And we stay strong and we stay together and be brave as ukrainians yeah really be brave <laughs> thank you